everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. Well, it's finally out. Three years after their successful Kickstarter campaign, WayForward has released Shantae, Half Genie Hero, and I love it. If you recall about two years back on the Game Theorist channel, I did a video talking about where Shantae's specific style of belly dance originated from, coming to the conclusion that its playful style and revealing dress comes from the Oriental dance style that originated in Turkey. Having since finished Half Genie Hero, I started wondering if this game soireed any further into Turkish culture. Granted, this is a game where alligator engineers kidnap girls for their mermaid factory in an attempt to create bootleg canned monster food. I'm not exactly expecting this game to go crazy deep into its source material, but even the most outlandish stories of our days are influenced by something and Shantae is no exception. Because if you thought only her dance was deep rooted into Turkish culture, <laughs> get ready because that's only the tip of this iceberg. For this analysis though, I want to start on the outside and work my way in. And you can't start off any further out than the game overworld map. Starting from the bottom of the map, we can see that the landmass protrudes outward along the western coast with lots of tiny islands dotting the waters just off the shoreline, with one big island about midway up the coast that seems larger and more habitable than the others. While the mainland to the south starts off with light vegetation, it has more and more forested areas the further up north you go. Finally at the very top, the water wraps around the northern part of the landmass. Now I kid you not, there is a section of Northwest Turkey from Koyunevi to Tefikie that matches this topography. It's not exactly one to one, but a lot of the topographic features are the same. Starting at the south, you have the landmass protruding outward just like the map in Shantae, with some lightly forested areas to the south and off to the east of the coastline. Also just like in Shantae's overworld map, not only are there small bodies of water to the east, but there's a larger island amongst the dotted landmasses to the west. Finally, when you get up to Tefikie, we discover that the area is heavily wooded and the Mediterranean wraps around the landmass just like Shantae's overworld map. But hey, we're only talking giant landmasses on a huge scale, right? It could just be coincidental. Well, let's look at the game's specific locations. You got Scuttletown and its main street, which already is starting to look like old Ottoman architecture present in other parts of Turkey, but it's the individual buildings inside the town where you start to see real similarities. Take the bathhouse, for example. Sure, you can heal up and whatnot in the water, but step back for a second and look at the architecture of this place. The wide circular design of the interior, the actual bathing areas in the dead center of the room, the potted plants, the mirrors, the jugs, even the trim along the walls. There's also what appears to be a bath attendant, and that seems kind of strange to have in this one bathing area, right? Now look at this. This is a hammam a kind of bathhouse found in Morocco and Turkey. While some of them are co-ed, most of them are gender segregated. And unlike many of the naturalistic bathhouses in the Far East, Hammam's bathing rooms are more intricately man-made with dome features, exotic paneling and trim, and in some cases man-made decor like those jugs that I mentioned earlier. Also from what I could tell in my research, many hammams are designed with the bathing area in the center of the room, just like the bathhouse in Shantae. As far as the clue giving bath attendant and Shantae goes, well, hammams have those as well. Yes, you can actually pay an attendant to scrub you down and even massage you, but expect to pay if not tip these services. So yeah, that's one almost perfectly symmetrical design choice for Shantae's world, but we're just getting started. Next is Sky's Hatchery. She basically raises and takes care of a variety of falcons with her sidekick wrench. Don't ask, it's a weird story. So what do falcons have to do with turkey? Well, like the majority of the Middle East, falconry is a huge pastime of the country. During the Ottoman Empire, Turkey's royal and elite held a massive passion for raising, training, and competing in various sporting events with their beloved falcons. And even to this day, the love of falconry in the forms of sportsmanship, breeding, and care is still alive and well within Turkey and beyond in the Middle East. But Scuttletown is just one location in this massive game world, so what about the others? Well, up next is Mermaid Falls. As previously mentioned, there are similarities between the game map and the northwestern part of Turkey where a decent number of bodies of water can be found, but what about waterfalls? Are those as prevalent in Turkey as they are in Shantae's world? Well, yeah. Turkey is home to 18 noteworthy waterfalls, but that's only one Turkish connection within this game location. As you advance the stage, you might notice that we went from Disney's Aladdin to Disney's Hercules. The architecture of the platforms and the columns that supports them is unmistakably ancient Greek and Roman. So how does that have anything to do with Turkey? Well, remember that what is now Turkey has been occupied by both Greece and Rome under Alexander the Great and Constantine respectively. As such, there are several Greek and Roman structures that reside in Turkey to this very day. 
with Aza Noi being a great example. Inside the ruined city, there actually exists a mostly intact temple to Zeus, theaters, baths, even an Acropolis. From Asphendos to Troy, Turkey has quite a large number of Greek and Roman ruins, so the archaeology between this game location and real-world Turkey match up pretty closely. What about this idea of mermaids in the Middle East? Was there such a thing? You better believe there was! Crack open the 1001 Arabian Nights and you'll find the story of Chulunar of the Sea. It tells the story of a king named Shah Zaman who had a hundred wives and concubines but no male heir to the throne. That is until he bought a beautiful slave girl named Julinar from a passing merchant for 10,000 pieces of gold. Though he showered her with affection, atmosphere, and material goods, she seemed happy but did not speak for a solid year. However, at the discovery of her child, she finally spoke, telling Shah Zaman that she actually comes from a civilization under the sea. Long story short, Shah Zaman invites his merfolk in-laws into the palace, they get along, he and Julnar have a son named Bedir Basim, and Shah Zaman passes away knowing that he has a strong and wise son to rule his kingdom. Not the most conflicting of stories I know, but it does solidify merfolk civilization as Middle Eastern mythology, which also helps solidify Mermaid Falls and Shantae as being culturally authentic. Next up is Tasseltown, and I won't spoil the story, but let's just say that desertification turned a once prosperous town into a barren wasteland. And while Turkey doesn't necessarily have any large deserts to speak of, desertification is becoming a big issue over there. Locations like the region of Konya are becoming arid due to excessive pumping of water from underground. Sinkholes are now replacing where the water table once sat, and unless something changes, more and more of Turkey may end up sharing the same fate as Tasseltown. Next up in Shantae Hafchini Hero is Cape Crustacean, where the inhabitants of Sequinland hold magic carpet races. While it is a small point, I do need to point out that when it comes to magical carpets, no one does it like Turkey. During the Ottoman Empire, the first court carpet workshop was created near Istanbul in order to weave elaborate carpets and rugs that would decorate the various Ottoman palaces. Eventually, it even took European countries by storm, acting as diplomatic gifts in the 14th century. Turkish rugs are also so detailed and exquisite when it comes to dyeing patterns and designs that you can actually single out by who and where it was made. Now then, earlier I made a comparison of this island in the game world with the island of Buzjada, which is just off of the mainland in Turkey. And while Buzjada has a lovely city life and the most well-preserved castle in history, the island is also known to host a very prominent race. Not flying carpets, mind you, but every second week in July, individuals bring their yachts to a 265 sea mile race between Istanbul and Buzjada. You're uh, kinda scaring me with how similar you are to Northwest Turkey game. Speaking of castles, next up is Hypnobaron's Castle, and at first I thought having a castle in this Middle Eastern game world was kinda weird, you know? But then I discovered that Turkey has over 70 castles within the country, most of which were built during the Roman, Ottoman, and Byzantine empires. Heck, if we're still basing Sequinland on that northwestern strip of Turkey, Hypnobaron's Castle would be sitting literally on top of Troy itself. So again, the connection between game world and the real world is entirely possible. Finally, there's Risky's Hideout, which turns out to be an active volcano. This is the part where I was thinking, okay, are there actually volcanoes in Turkey? Surely Risky's Hideout is the outlier here, right? Nope, I was completely wrong. There are actually 14 active and extinct volcanoes spreading all over Turkey. So, way forward, Matt Bozon, I don't know if you meant to do this or not, but just about everything in Shantae, from things as small as her belly dance style to the entire world she lives in, all of it is completely encased in Turkish culture. Oh, and don't think I'm done either, because as soon as you guys release that Risky Boots DLC, I'm going to culturally rip it apart to see if there's even more of Turkey's history and culture behind it. But until then, guys, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of my newest cultural analysis videos. And if you can't wait for new content, be sure to click those annotations and links in the description to learn more about how video games teach us about the world we live in. But until next time, everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.